Hi, welcome to today's quick tip video. Now today's quick tip video is on an interesting subject for me, the control room. The control room takes your audio interface and it turns it into a virtual recording studio. The control room can send up to four individual performance sends to different performers in on a session. We can also add studio monitor sends, headphone sends, studio inputs and a talkback microphone. And we can control all of this from the Cubase mixer. Let's go and take a closer look at the control room. The first thing to do is to go to the mix console and enable the control room. Now we've got a new volume control down the bottom of this window. This is independent of the stereo out volume control. Let's click on the arrow in the top right hand side and open VST connections. On my input connections I've got two very simple mono inputs, a vocal and a guitar. The first thing I'm going to do is disconnect my outputs and then go over to the studio. This is where we set up our control room connections and it's really quite simple. First of all, let's add a channel and let's add a monitor channel. I'm calling this SEX because these are my studio monitors. A lot of people have two sets of monitors, so let's add another monitor channel. I'm going to call this Yamaha. My main objective today is to set up two independent headphone sends using the two headphone outputs on the front of the Steinberg UR44. This is going to sound strange, but I'm only using the one headphone send in the control room. Now I'm adding an external input, and this could be something like an iPod that we're using for referencing different tracks. Most importantly, we need to set up some sends for the performers. Now these are called cues. We have up to four cues, and with each cue we can send the performer their own mix. In addition, with iOS 6 devices and the Cubase IC Pro app, performers can control their very own cue mix themselves. That's pretty cool. I've now finished setting up a cue mix for the vocalist and the guitarist. The next job is to add the connections. I don't have enough connections on my UR44 for all of these buses, but I've got just enough to set up two independent headphone sends, which is all I need for my home project studio. My egg monitors I've connected to the main mix 1. My headphones I've connected to the main mix 2, left and right. You could also assign the Yamaha speakers to the FX, bus left and bus right, if you wanted to. If you've got a larger audio device with more outputs, it's really easy to continue to set up individual sends and individual studio components. Up in audio devices, you can select the audio hardware setup. I'm leaving my first set of headphones assigned to the main mix, left and right. My second set of headphones I'm assigning to mix 2 left and right. The first set of headphones is going to monitor whatever I'm monitoring in the main section of the control room. The second set of headphones is going to monitor whatever I have selected in the headphone section. If you look down to the bottom right of the control room section, you can see we're on setup. In the setup window, we can add VST effects over each individual send. I'm adding a brick wall limiter over the vocals, the guitar and the monitors. This will limit the signal and stop it going over a specific level, which is handy for performers using headphones, because if there's a loud volume surge on any of the channels, it can damage their ears. I'm also adding the Wave Psychoacoustic Analyzer, which allows me to monitor stereo positioning and frequency spread on my monitor channel. Down in the main section, the volume control works independently of the stereo output in Cubase. It's controlling our studio monitors. The dim switch is handy if you want to check where your vocals are sitting or just have a chat in the control room. There's a click track which you also need to activate in the transport control. I mentioned an iPod before for referencing. If we go up to the external input, we could reference the material being played on the iPod against the main mix. I've gone across to my Q1 and Q2 and you'll notice there's no signal. Now that's because we've not set up any sends from the project. We'll set that up in a moment, but let's go across to the headphones. This is an independent headphone send coming out of Headphones 2 on my UR44. I can control the level. Once again, I can add a click track independent of all the other sends. I can monitor the external input and I can also choose to monitor between Q1 and Q2. At the moment, we've got four different listening possibilities for this second independent headphone send. Speaking of listening options, I've gone back down to the main section and clicked on Mix. Now I'm using the A and B button to switch in between my studio monitors, the Eggs and the Yamahas, and I can also select to listen to those in stereo or mono. Your monitors will be listed in the Monitor tab. Let's get to the most important part, setting up the vocalist studio sends. First of all, I'm selecting Q1 in the main window so I can monitor it. Then I'm going over to the E button on the first electric guitar. Let's turn on that first Q send and we can adjust the volume. 
let's also send that guitar to the guitarist. So now we've got the guitar send going to the vocalist and the guitarist. And we can monitor the vocalist and the guitarist in Q1 and Q2 down in the main window. It would be time consuming to use that process for all channels. There is a faster way. We can activate the Q sends in our mix console by going to racks and selecting Q sends so we can see them. We now have easy and instant access to all of the Q sends for all of the tracks in this project. We can turn them on, we can adjust the volume. We've even got an individual pan control over each of the sends going to the different performers. So I'm setting up a comfortable mix for my vocalist and I'm also adding some of the effects. If you're working with a lot of tracks, you could easily send them to groups and then send the cue mixes from the group tracks. Now that the vocalist is happy, let's go set up the guitar sends. Of course, the guitarist wants to hear every track that the guitarist is playing, so let's give him all of those sends and the bass. The guitarist might be concentrating on a very specific part and maybe the vocals are putting him off. First of all, make sure you're monitoring the guitarist cue mix and then you can go and turn the vocals off. The guitarist might want some click to help him get through a difficult part, so it's as easy as going up to the guitarist cue send and turning on the click. This really is where the control room starts to take shape. It allows us to send independent signals out all over the studio and ensure that every performer is 100% comfortable with that performance environment. We can very quickly give the lead vocalist the reference track through the external input and the main mix. It's also really simple to set up a talkback microphone that goes throughout the whole entire studio. It's easy to toggle back and forth between the control room and your meter. You just go up to the tab on the top right hand side. And you'll notice the meter is operating on the stereo output channel. If I go back to the main control room section, I can find the analysis tools I added over the top of the monitor channel. Now I can monitor the analyzer and my meter at the same time. As with pretty much anything inside of Cubase, once you're happy with the connections and the setup that you've got, you can go back to open VST connections and save this routing system as a preset. I've got to be honest, doing this video has made me realize that I need the control room function wherever I'm recording. This is not just for complicated recording setups. This is for everyday recording inside of Cubase Pro.